Hello guys, I feel like it has been a while, even though I've still technically been seeing you guys because I've been doing the weekly live stream still, but it's definitely been a while since I've just posted like a regular video on this channel. Also apologies for the light, it's making my skin, I have coconut oil on my face, <laughs> and this light is making me look super red. I'm in my room, as you can probably tell. Yeah, I have a Christmas tree. It's fine. We, we like we like fun lights and fun things, so. Anyways, that's aside the point. <laughs> uh, it's been a while since I've made a video. I've been going through a ton of different stuff in my personal life. And I'm finally coming back. And I'm super, super excited to create content again. And I also realized that you know, there's been a part of my dream practice that has been abandoned throughout this process of getting things figured out and getting back into the swing of things. And so that's kind of what I wanted to talk about as far as, you know, our dream practice, starting over, re-beginning, you know, how do we get re-inspired? How do we get re-motivated? Like, what are the practices we should be doing and what are the practices that maybe we don't really need to focus on when we're getting back into our dream practice because I'm right there with you and I have felt disconnected from my dreams for the past like month or so and I'm finally starting to have more dream recall when you're in a state of stress or when you're traveling or when you're working on a lot of things by the way your dream recall will naturally kind of decrease so I don't think that it's you don't think that there's something wrong with you I truly believe that there's an ebb and flow to everything, including our dream practice, and when energy is being put somewhere else, we can see that within our, our dreams, right? It takes a lot of energy for us to not only remember our dreams, but consciously interact with our dreams. And so if we're not kind of a clear channel and have a lot of energy to put into that, uh, then it can kind of uh, decrease uh, in how much we dream and how vivid we dream and so I want you to know that like it's totally normal to <laughs> step away from your dream practice or to take a break I know a lot of people a lot of my friends uh, who are dreamers smoke cannabis right and that's a thing that <laughs> that is a huge issue for people trying to lucid dream you know they have this like love hate relationship with cannabis because they want to take time to chill out and just relax and but if they do then their dreams completely get destroyed and that's okay to take some time off you know like you don't have to completely cut all of these things out uh, because then it's going to create extra pressure around dreaming you're going to resent yourself when you don't perform like you want to as far as lucid dreaming and all of that and your use with cannabis getting in the way if that's something that you that you use. I'm using that as an example because there's so many people who uh, in my community who do smoke cannabis and they're getting back into their dream practice again um, but they just kind of feel disconnected from it and even if you don't smoke cannabis I understand that some of us can just feel unmotivated or uninspired or disconnected from our dreams and we don't really know how to get back in. So that's kind of what I wanted to talk about. Um, and this is like an informal vi video. I'm just on the floor uh, in here. <laughs> I just felt like recording in here because it's nice and cozy and... Oh yeah, you want to see my piece, Lily? Let me get it. This is my piece, Lily. It's still kind of growing. I've had this since I took care of my um, grandmother last year. Anyways, that's aside. <laughs> the point as well. <laughs> so when it comes to starting your dream practice again, the things that I really recommend doing is find something that inspires you. So it could be a YouTube channel that creates dream content that you can watch that inspires you. It could be a really good lucid dreaming book. Maybe even just hearing about people's experiences. That's one for me that really, really gets me hyped up is hearing other people's experiences because then I feel like I'm kind of missing out and it really motivates me uh, to kind of start again because I'm like, oh my gosh, that's such a cool experience. You know, I really miss dreaming or I really miss lucid dreaming. Um, so just finding things that make you feel that connection again to your dreams. So that's going to be different for everybody. But for me, I love reading lucid dreaming books 
because I get to hear about the benefits of lucid dreaming. I get to hear about um, people's experiences, how to do it, and all of the beautiful like effects it has on the body and mind. And I love science. I love looking at the numbers. I love looking at the studies of things and there's a lot of studies and um, experiments happening with lucid dreaming now and so it kind of pumps me up because there's so much that's possible through dreaming and it can, it can really completely transform your life. I never, I definitely recommend removing all shame from your practice if you've felt disconnected, if you've, you've know, you've been more unconscious with your habits lately. I know that a dream practice takes, you know, a bit of structure. <laughs> and I think if we hold ourselves too strongly to that structure, it can cause us to burn out. And this is why so many have to kind of re-begin their dream practice again, because they're putting so much energy into it that the law of balance comes into play and kind of removes you so you can kind of, you know, replenish your energy. So find a way to not only inspire you, like we just talked about, to get back into dreaming, but find a way where you can um, really merge your practice with your day-to-day -day life so it kind of feels natural. It's not something you have to make yourself do. It's not something that feels like a chore, you know? Um, so just little, little practices when you start getting back into dreaming is what I'd recommend. So starting with just writing down uh, your dreams in the morning. And of course, if you're not remembering dreams, just write down, I didn't remember any dreams. Or I just stopped smoking cannabis, so I'm still building up my dream recall. Or, you know, the dr your dream journal should just be an honest, like, journal for what's going on during sleep. We don't have to only use it when we are actively dreaming or lucid dreaming. It's just to record where you're at. That's really all that it is. Um, and it's a memory building tool. So as long as you're using it, you're building your dream memory, you know? So I would say passion, finding something that gets you kind of back into the practice, like we talked about, finding little practices to that feel natural with what you're already doing that are kind of easy to implement, like dream journaling, um, and figuring out what your goal is you know, with dreaming. Why do you use dreaming? Or why do you want to lucid dream? What is one thing that it can do to enhance or transform your life in some way? And I, you could probably use dreaming for literally anything. I truly, truly, truly believe that because it's, it's a, it's a door to our internal world, you know, like, Someone talked to me the other day about certain archetypes that they met uh, within their dreaming experiences. And I just think it's so interesting that we can meet all of these internal archetypes, you know, and even thought forms we can actually meet in the form of dream characters. So this, this, uh, this recurring thought that you have that may be like a limiting thought or a limiting belief or um, even like a lie that you've told, even to yourself. Um, that can show up as an actual dream character. So just these little thoughts or these little, these certain aspects of ourselves, we can all of a sudden expand them and talk to the personality behind that archetype or that thought or whatever through a dream character. That blows my mind. Like the fact that you can meet a dream character and they could represent like your fear of planes or something and they have like a whole personality and they can have an intelligent conversation with you. Isn't that insane that we can connect to different parts of ourselves on such a deep level? I don't know any other practice, any other practice that allows us to do this deep of work with our internal world. And really, I believe that every experience in life is really just to bring us back to ourselves to to help us create a deeper connection with ourself and you know dreaming is no no different at all <laughs> dreaming is one of my favorite ways to explore who i am what this reality is what consciousness even means you know it, it just it just it answers some questions but then it creates a lot more questions <laughs> 
And I think that's that's the beauty of it. There's just so much mystery and potential behind dreaming that really anything is possible. So this is something that I like to think about, especially when I'm creating like dream goals or thinking about, you know, what I want to do next in my next lucid dream. And for me, it's really just all about exploration. I haven't had fun, like purposefully just had a lucid dream to have one in a long time. I'm always like going to find something or someone or talking to my subconscious about something in particular or practicing a skill or getting business ideas. I never, <laughs> hardly ever now do I just lucid dream to have a lucid dream and have fun. So maybe that's one thing I should do. Because again, the law of balance comes into play. We don't want to put too much excess potential in one area because it's going to balance out whether we like it or not. Um, <laughs> and so that's why balance is such a huge part of this. Um, because it's going to allow you to achieve a lot more in your dream experiences because you won't have to go through this constant in and out of your dream practice. You feel burnout and then you're re-inspired and then you're burnout. Why are you getting burnout? Ask yourself that question. What is, what is too much? Where is your too much gene coming in when it comes to your dream practice? And for a lot of people, it's the constant techniques. Waking up in the middle of the night waking up at 4 a.m. every single night to do the same technique. I don't recommend doing that, by the way. <laughs> um, you, don't, you don't want your brain to get so used to waking up at a certain time doing a specific technique because eventually it's just going to stop working. So I would have like a couple days a week where you do an actual induction technique if that's something you want to do. And then just create certain habits that allow you to spontaneously have lucid dreams. At least that's my favorite way. Because again, if I can create a consistent habit of awareness and, you know, kind of looking at the world in a, in a critical way, not in a critical way like we're used to thinking, but in a critical way where I'm truly getting present with where I am, what's going on, you know, and just creating a habit around that will allow you to lucid dream naturally so you won't even have to do techniques. For me, that's easier in the long run and saves me a lot more energy and a lot more time. Um, so <laughs> maybe that's a way to prevent burnout is just stop doing so many induction techniques and focus on creating more natural awareness, you know. But I just want to see where you guys are at. Please comment on this video to let me know like where you're at with your dreaming practice and what struggles you're having and maybe some of your goals for lucid dreaming. I love to read your comments, by the way. I Obviously, I haven't been able to get to too many of them for the past little bit. And I sometimes get so many comments on so many videos that are on certain videos that it can be hard for me to keep up after a while. So what I'm going to try to do is the first two hours of a video being posted, I'm going to try to reply to as many comments as I can. So if you are, uh, you know, uh, wanting to kind of chat with me or kind of let me know where you're at, um, then I'll probably be a lot more likely to see it if it's within like the first couple hours of me posting the video. But of course, I will always try to get to comments later or whenever I can. I love you guys and I love to see where you're at and I, I definitely want to hear your opinion on this. This is just a very spontaneous random video because this is kind of where I'm at. You know, I'm just getting back into my dream practice and it feels like I'm just starting everything and I'm getting re-inspired and I'm, I'm allowing myself to go back to certain basics so that I don't feel like I'm just jumping into something that's too much or overwhelming, right? You haven't had a dream practice at all for three months and then all of a sudden you're gonna stay up all night and induce awake, induce lucid dream. No, you're gonna start with the basics and work your way up and it's not gonna take as long because you've already created the skills and the habits to build your dream recall, to get conscious in your dreams. So it's like just pushing a pause button and jumping back in. It's, it's not starting over, you know, but touching on the basics I feel is extremely important. Um, for our dream practice, especially when we come out of it for a little bit and then we come back in with a new goal, a new, you know, a fresh, uh, mind, a fresh perspective on it. But 
Again, finding the reason that you want a lucid dream or finding something that inspires you to lucid dream is something I'd recommend if you're getting back into dreaming. Making it easy on yourself, making it feel easy and allowing it to kind of feel like a natural part of your day, you know, that's something I would definitely recommend to prevent burnout. Getting in touch with your why, why you want to have this practice or maybe what your next goal in your lucid dreams is, you know, like what you really want to spend your time doing. And then just learning about it because the more we learn about it, the more, like even me, like I just get so excited and so pumped up when I learn something new about dreams or sleep or consciousness. And it like just puts me in a gear and makes me want to try it out and explore and just experiment. So definitely learning more and more about dreaming. And I'm in a, I'm just, like I said, I'm just getting back into content. I'm just getting back into videos. So I will be making a lot more videos on different topics within dreaming astral projection, visiting certain topics, talking about certain techniques. Um, so please let me know what you would like to see on the channel. Um, but I have a ton already planned. Um, and then of course, if you want direct influence over the content I create, so you can kind of choose the content I create, I am offering that to my Patreons. So that is also an option um, if you want to be a little bit more involved in the content that I create. And I'm really ramping up my Patreon and my memberships and stuff. I just got my memberships back on my channel. Um, and I'm doing a lot more with Patreon now as well. There's so much that I want to do. Oh my gosh. So I'm just taking it one day at a time. Um, and I thought that I would start with making this video because I love you guys and I miss you guys. And even though we hang out on um, our live streams every Monday, once a week is not enough for me. I really want to talk to you guys and hang out with you guys. Um, so please let me know where you're at with your dream practice, maybe what you're struggling with, and I'll try to reply to as many people as I can in the comments and, and kind of just help one another, you know? We're, we're, I'm sure we're all at, you know, some of us anyways are at similar spots in our journey with dreaming. Um, and especially coming back into the practice is something that happens to most dreamers at some point, at least once, but there's a chance it's been probably several more times than just once. <laughs> Speaking from personal experience, but definitely let me know where you guys are at. I love you so, so, so much. And again, if you like the content I create, make sure to subscribe so I, so I know that you, you like being here. And also, I have a second channel, The Lucid Mystic Sleep Music, where I create binaural beats, sleep music to help you sleep soundly and dream lucidly. So check that out if you like it as well. Um, and I can't wait to make another video and, and talk to you guys. So I love you. Thanks for listening to this long, long video. <laughs> and I will see you in the next one. As always, I'm sending you endless love and endless lucidity.